Hello, I'm Ronan Chris Murphy from Ronan's Italy Show, and in this video I want to share with you a review of a product I picked up for my last trip to Italy, as well as a few user tips if you end up picking it out for yourself. So my last European trip, which I just got back from a few weeks ago, uh, was kind of all over the place. A lot of time in Italy, but also off in Paris and off also in Istanbul, Turkey. And when I'm traveling overseas, I'm doing a lot of stuff. I'm doing video production. I'm also doing photography work. Um, and I'm also doing music recording. Again, in the background, you see my day job when I'm not traveling around the world uh, doing travel stuff. And uh, for that, I've got this low pro uh, backpack camera bag, which I absolutely love. It's lightweight, durable, didn't cost a lot, room for a computer, as well as a couple cameras, lenses, an audio recorder, and headphones. It's amazing that I can actually fit basically a whole studio to switch between video and audio production right in this bag. The only problem with it is it's really big. So uh, if I'm going out to dinner, guest over in somebody's house, or just want to travel light, it's really, really big. So I was looking for a smaller stripped down solution and I found the perfect thing. It is, nope, not this one. It is the Think Tank Retrospective 5. It was exactly what I wanted because I wanted something nice, lightweight, a lot of features, but also something that looked kind of stylish, didn't look like a big camera bag like I was a tourist uh, traipsing through any part of town I went to. Unfortunately, the Think Tank bags are about 145 bucks. And it was tough for me thinking about pulling the trigger $145 on a bag. So um, I looked around a little more and then I found this. This is the Tamrac 3444 Rally 4 camera bag. And truth be told, it was pretty darn close to everything I needed. And uh, so I picked it up. I actually found it on sale for about $30. Normally they're about $45. So I bought it before this European trip and I had a chance to really run it through its paces and find out all the good things and unfortunately a few not great things about it that I'll share with you and show you a few of my workarounds. So the good thing is the bag is fairly well built. It's exactly the size I was looking for. So if I'm out doing a day of photography, the can my Canon 70D, kind of the heart of my photography these days, I can fit that in there, as well as my flash. And this is a Canon 320EX. Can fit both of those in there. They both fit snug and secure, and I am ready to go. If I'm gonna be out and, out and about doing, say, more outdoor landscape photography, nature photography, and I won't be using a flash, also fits my larger zoom lens. Again, everything fits in there perfect and snug. If I'm out doing a day of guerrilla video production, which I do a lot of, this is my Zoom H4N recorder. Fits in right there with the flash and the zoom went, and they fit nice. There's also even room for the lavalier mic that I use, which is a uh, Shure MX150. Boom, those three in, very snug. Buckled up. And I'm good to go. It's kind of amazing when you think that I can do video production and a wide range of photography just all in this bag. So the bag also has a slot back here, which I think if you've got an iPad mini, which I don't, I think it could just sneak in there, but also you could fit, what do I have in here? Got postcards in there and stickers things left over from the last trip. So uh, I've got all these things in here, uh, also good for notes. It's not very big and it's also not secured. So keep that in mind. On the sides, we've got these mesh pockets here, stretchy with a not very substantial little loop there and the exact same thing on the other side. On the front, we've got this big pocket, which opens up wide, a couple little smaller pockets right in there. So there's actually enough room to pop in. Here's my battery charger for my flash, battery charger for the Canon 70D, even enough room for this little flash diffuser, and all fits in here. But here is the first and the most fatal flaw 
of this Tamarack bag, you'll notice everything is loose. There is no compartment in this entire bag that zips up securely with either a zipper or Velcro. So your SD cards, whether alone or in the case, which they normally would be, they're just, if you're gonna carry them in the bag, they're just thrown in here along with everything else. So if you accidentally leave the bag a little loose or if you're fumbling around, the chance that you could lose an SD card or small batteries or things like that is way too great for my taste. It's the one thing about this bag that I really dislike. Uh, I had the idea that I could just get maybe a small coin purse or something and put it in there and loop it on something here, but unfortunately, there's nothing inside that I can actually loop or hook a small little coin purse onto. So having no way to really safely secure small items is the one major fatal flaw of this bag and the one thing I really kind of hate about it. A couple other things that uh, make this maybe a little bit less than some other bags is you'll notice, again, it doesn't really secure on the top. You just flip this over. There's a little Velcro there and a buckle there. Everything seems kind of tough and durable enough. So I'm kind of okay with that. And again, I didn't expect a bag with everything. I wanted a bag that was gonna be functional and not too big and cumbers cumbersome when I'm going out traveling light or going to dinner and things like that. A couple things some other fancier bags have that this one doesn't is you'll notice that some bags have sort of built-in rain covers and jackets where you can open it up, flip it out, and you've got a nice waterproof jacket. Again, at this price point, this does not, but I have a very high-tech solution. Here, in this, I keep a plastic trash bag. In this one, and when I'm out and about in the rain, very helpful if you're gonna be doing, especially if you're gonna be doing photo shoots like in Florida or Southeast Asia where you can get monsoons that creep up on you. I'll just put this in here. Pull the drawstrings. And again, not very elegant, but I've got my camera protected from rain for the duration. When it's done, shake this out, let it dry, we have time. But even if we don't, we're putting it back into this external pocket. And this will fold way, way down. Where we don't have to worry too much about moisture uh, getting into the camera equipment. One of the other thing that I think is a pretty good idea if you're like me and travel around to maybe a lot of do photography in places that maybe you shouldn't be hanging around. Uh, you could also put a little pepper spray in there just to uh, one extra thing to make life on the road a little less worrisome. So, so one other thing this bag is lacking, and again, you can't complain at this price point, is really substantial hooks that you could hook things onto. It's got this little handle here, which things could hook onto, but there's nothing that sort of opens up and claps. I've solved that problem at the dollar store. Basically, these three lightweight carabiners, not for climbing purpose, cheapo dollar store ones. And with this, I've got these hooked on right here on either side. So if I need to hang accessories off here, whether that's camera gear or even just hang a jacket, I've got a lot of options. And where I actually use this the most now is I've got this nice Manfrotto, really lightweight monopod that I can just hook onto here. So if I'm traveling around, I've got that easily available. This is nice and lightweight, but if I also don't want this to be really clumsy and hitting myself or other people on a subway, just flip it in there, just buckle that up, and I've got that in fairly tight, secure, and not getting in the way. One other thing that I've done here is put a second carabiner on this side one for other accessories, but more importantly, for one other reason. Again, a lot of times when you're traveling around the world, shooting film and video, you're in places that may not always be the safest places for you and your gear. And if you're hanging out, having dinner out, like say in an open market or outside stall, the risk of somebody coming along, grabbing your bag is, uh, it's a very real risk. So what I've done with this one is just added this second one, which I can just, when I'm sitting around eating with my camera bag next to me, 
hook onto me right here. So some bad guy comes along and tries to grab my bag and run off with it. There's a couple hundred pounds here that's going to suggest to him that's not the best idea in the world. So it, it gives a little uh, extra security for your equipment for 33 cents. Overall, for the price, I can't complain. It's been a great bag, really done what I needed to do. But the big question for me after traveling around was, is it the Think Tank Killer? No. For one big reason. One is the Think Tank's got a few extra things, better secure pockets, built-in rain guard, and a few extra things. That's why you pay an extra $100 for it. But the big thing, at the end of the day, as nice and stylish as this bag sort of is, it still looks like a camera bag. And that's the one thing I really didn't want. And this really came to a head when I was traveling around in Istanbul, walking around with this bag, I was constantly bombarded and barraged by people. Hey, come in, check out my products. Come, come, I've got this great thing for you, this great deal for you. Just constantly getting that tourist attack. Again, nobody was mean or nasty, but I like to be able to travel and blend in a little bit better whenever possible. And then one day I went out just for a walk and didn't bring this bag and it was a completely different experience. Uh, virtually nobody approached me to try and sell me things. And actually people approached me asking me for directions or if I had a light for their cigarette. People actually thought I was Turkish, which apparently I look kind of Turkish. Uh, Irish blood, but apparently I look Turkish. So this bag, as cool as it is, still looks like a tourist camera bag. And the one thing that that Think Tank bag has is it really does look like a hip, stylish courier bag that you'd be keeping your business stuff in. And it doesn't have that, hey, I'm a tourist camera thing. Making that the one thing that keeps it still on my wish list and makes it so that the Tamrac bag does not beat it out. That's it, I hope this helped a little bit, except for the few things I whined about on this video. This is actually a great bag and bang for your buck. Uh, I can't imagine it being beat. I did a lot of research about bags around this size before this last European trip. And really it came down to this one and the Think Tank, which costs $100 more than this one. Both look like great bags, but dollar for dollar, this is just an awesome purchase and you will not go wrong for it. You'll just look a little bit like a tourist and that's what we are half the time. So don't worry about that. All right, thanks a lot.